Hello and welcome to Vegas Aces Q&A Interview Edition. I'm your host, Heather Ferris, and on today's episode, I'm going to be talking to Dr. Mike Algren about the American Gaming Association. Dr. Algren, thank you very, very much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Mm, now, pleasure. you are a professor at Penn State. You have a PhD in gaming and hospitality. You have worked at the American Gaming Association. What can you tell me about the American Gaming Association and how would you explain that to people who don't know um, exactly what type of um, corporation it is? Well, it's, I mean, it's a, an association, so really what you have is, is the major operators, Las Vegas, uh, Wynn Resorts, MGM, uh, Caesars Entertainment, then Harrah's when I was working there. They are all essentially due-paying members. And the way that it came about was uh, really Frank Ferenkopf, I think he was a real visionary in this industry, and, and he gave the industry a lot of credibility. Uh, but he, you know, he was the former uh, head of the Republican National Committee appointed by Ronald Reagan. I think he held the uh, position longer than anyone in history. Uh, and when he was Finished with that, he was consulting in Washington, and he was originally a gaming attorney here in here in Nevada. Uh, and when he finished his his position as the the, the chair of the Republican National Committee, um, a number of the gaming executives, I think he had said to them, "Look, you're this is in the mid '90s." Um, they had said to him, "Look, you're crazy." that you have no representation in Washington, D.C. So you have this big industry out here in Nevada with essentially no representation and, and looking anyone looking out for their interests in Washington, D.C. So they went to Frank and said, uh, well, why don't you put that together for us? And he wasn't really initially interested in doing so. Uh, he headed up the initial search for, for a head. And after they interviewed these different candidates, they said, no, we'd rather have you. And uh, eventually, I guess they made the offer good enough because eventually he agreed. He said, I think he was only going to do it to five or ten years. And, and uh, he held it from, I think, the, I want to say the mid-90s to this summer. He's finally retiring. Uh, but he was the one that really, I, I think he did the, the industry a, a, a world of good. He made it very legitimate because he said right away, he said, we want to be different. He wanted to be different than the tobacco industry, where the tobacco industry pretty much... Um, denied any negative effects of their product until they essentially had no choice but to the courts just said you have to admit it and then eventually they stamped it on their packages and but Frank was a real visionary in that he said you know what the, the, the truth is is that as a result of our industry, some people have problems, and they have serious problems. There are people that their marriages break up, they families break up. You know, a number there there's a, there is a certain degree of negative fallout from the gaming industry that's just undeniable. So he said, rather than just deny it and you know put our heads in the sand and pretend like that's not you know uh, a reality, he said, let's take a leadership role and let's actually fund real research, not just canned research that, that, that you know we approve of. Uh, they went to Harvard University, and Harvard University doesn't need the gaming industry. Uh, they have plenty of people that want to you know, donate money to them. So they took a real leadership role, and I think that's largely to Frank's credit. And, and, and I think, and, and really, I think because of that, that's one of the reasons that the industry was able to, to expand the way it was. Because I think people, uh, under sort of walking behind him, began looking at the industry differently. And, and I think that's why you have, you know, well, now you basically don't have gambling in what, Utah and Hawaii. And, and, and I think that trend is going to continue, and I think he should at least get some credit for it. So, to answer, I, I'm sorry, I'm like going on and on and on, but to answer your question, they represent, so they're keeping an eye on if there's any rumblings of any laws that might be, uh, you know, have an adverse effect on the industry. Uh, they'll also push for studies, uh, 
you know, we're, we're, for example, you know, if the industry feels like the public has a misunderstanding of the industry in certain ways, they might push, you know, Congress to study that, take a look at it. I know that originally that was the idea is that we wanted uh, Congress to take a look at online gambling, whether we could protect it from, you know, 15 year olds, uh, so on and so forth. Because I think originally the industry wanted uh, gaming to be legalized at the federal level. Nevada said that, okay, we're going to legalize it, but that means really only people in Nevada can play. So now, if, for example, before we can have people in Arizona playing on Nevada sites, Arizona's got to make it legal on a state level, and then we've got to agree on compacts, you know, saying that who gets what taxes, and it becomes very complicated, where it would have been much easier with online to have that done at the federal level. Uh, but but that doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon. So, uh, so for example, the, the AJ would be involved maybe in pushing, it didn't work in this case, pushing Congress maybe to do a, a federal study and then, you know, maybe in the, in, the, in the legislating at the federal level, which they weren't successful at, but they've been very successful in a lot of other areas. And then the, and then the last thing that they do is really, they, then that's what I was involved in, more on the research side, they put out, for example, the State of the States, which, so every year they do a comprehensive re report on uh, gaming in every state in the, in the U.S. So, you know, how many people are hired, uh, how many wages, how much wages are paid, how much taxes are collected, how many casinos they have, you know, on, on and on and on and on. So that that's another arm of it, the research side. And then it's also the AGA that's behind the major gaming show, G2E, that's put on really through the AGA. Um, did you learn anything interesting while you were working in the research department there? Or anything that you um, found surprising, maybe? My answer to that would be, uh, I think when I, you know, I came to UNLV, did a master's program, and then went to work for... Uh, spending spending my year at, at the American Gaming Association, and at that point, that, I really thought that you know all gaming really happened in Las Vegas, and and that's one thing that I saw is that uh, you know there's a big world out there when it comes to gaming, uh, you know even then, and that was before when I was there, that was just as Pennsylvania was legalizing, you know now Pennsylvania is the second biggest market in the in the U.S., so it opened my eyes to that the you know. The gaming industry is expanding at a very rapid pace, and I got a first-hand look at that, I guess. Very cool. That does it for today's show. Now, I want to know what your thoughts are on the American Gaming Association. Write about your experiences in the comments section below.